Start. Hey, it's Lemon. Welcome to the Backlogs. December has finally arrived. And you know, with all that's happened on the channel in the last year, I'm feeling somewhat reminiscent. This channel has grown an insane amount since last December. Back then, it took me two or three weeks to get out a video, my audio quality made me cringe internally, and we were sitting on about 20,000 subscribers. Somehow. Well, we must have done something right between now and then, because that, uh... Ooh boy. So, to give my thanks to everyone who's made this channel what it is today, I've got several brain-melting, hair-pulling, soul-destroying challenge runs planned for the rest of the month. Because that's what the holiday season is all about. Probably. I hope you enjoy. But before we dive into that, a word from our sponsor, HelloFresh. Is... is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. Go ahead, buddy. And thanks for asking. Cooking is hard, and if you're busy trying to make up for lost time like the rest of humanity, the idea of spending an hour or more making a meal feels daunting at best. But that's where HelloFresh comes in. Not only will they deliver meals directly to your doorstep, but the meals themselves come in pre-portioned sizes, so you know you'll have exactly what you need for each meal. And while it doesn't come pre-cooked, each meal comes with detailed instructions on exactly how to prepare it, so you can still learn how to cook delicious meals with minimum stress. Are you on a specific diet? Or maybe you have picky eaters at home. Whatever the situation, HelloFresh has you covered, with multiple menu options to help you feed everyone in your family while still having a wide variety to keep things fresh. And for those of us trying to minimize our impact on the environment, HelloFresh has thought of that too. Almost all of their packaging is recyclable, and they're always doing their best to reduce the amount of packaging required for their meals. And with every meal consisting of pre-portioned ingredients, the amount of food waste created is dramatically less as well. As someone who's eaten a HelloFresh meal or three in my time, I can say with certainty that they definitely take the frustration out of cooking. Not only does it reduce the amount of, well, what do you want to eat before dinner, but as someone who struggles with creative cooking and would rather have step-by-step -step instructions, there's nothing better. If that sounds like a good deal to you, I've got a better one. Use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use code POGBACKLOGDEC70 for 70% off plus free shipping on your first box. Once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases. You know what? Let's open a box now. I'm feeling pretty soul-starved, so this should... <sighs> Sultan Sacrifice. Secretly my favorite child, this game has it all. Dark Souls combat, Monster Hunter grinding, and if you just so happen to plug in your favorite YouTuber's name into the portal, a super secret challenge run level that gives you the ultimate weapons of mass destruction. Behold, the Harvest Lord. Run in terror as you bask in... And it's... the... Uh, why is it so cute? I, uh, you know, I'll be honest, I was mentally prepared for a continuation of the potato run. You know, with the eldritch horror and all. But this, this is not what I was expecting. Are we, are we sticking with this? Alright then. So begins the journey of the Harvest Lord, second vegetable born of the eldritch root. The fiercest deity this age has ever seen. And he's hiding under a blanket. Ooh. Not much to look at, are ya? You know what? You need a more appropriate name. How about... Harvey. Woo! Harvey it is. Harvey here has a unique problem. Being a newborn, um, carrot, he's not quite ready for the world at large. Not only do we not have the skill to use our weapon of choice, but we lack the skill to even use our armor without being over encumbered. Doing some fisticuff combos helps us move around faster, but it's still a miserable experience. But miserable experiences is what we're all about on this channel. Let's go Harvey, time to show them what we're made of. Alright, let's talk numbers. The carrot armor and the carrot throwing knives, yes, that's what those are, are tier 2 and tier 5 equipment, respectively. Which means, in order to get any amount of use out of them, we're going to need the tier 2 heavy armor skill and the tier 5 throwing dagger skill. And in order to get those, we need salt. Thankfully, through heavy determination, we can get our hands on some. Emphasis on some. But, unlike the potato only run, we have limited carrots at our disposal. In salt and sacrifice, you need irona ore to make more ammunition. And yes, that includes carrots. However, we've got one thing going for us. Rather than constantly going back and forth to all the Irona ore gathering spots trying to build up hundreds of carrots, all we need to do is go back to the obelisk and rest. Because if you ever run completely out of ammunition, the game will give you one full complement of ranged ammo whenever you rest instead of restocking from your inventory. Which means this little stretch of land that you've seen me bounce back and forth across is our new home. We'll be right back. One week later. Alright, it took some heavy lifting, but I officially have enough skill and endurance to use my armor. Look at that little boy go! See how he runs! Of course, we still haven't quite gotten around to having actually good throwing weapons, but one step at a time. 
The difference between struggling to move and being able to jump and roll is astounding. You have no idea how good it feels just to be able to move. There is one problem, though. Our damage output is... well, you'll see. Hello, Eryx. Hope you're doing well. As you can see, the damage of my carrots is somewhat lacking. Combine this with the fact that we're fat rolling, and this whole fight is just a complete mess. Follow that up with the fact that you can only have 30 Irona ore in your pocket that you can convert to ammunition, and you've got what we in the industry call a brick wall. This truly is the potato run all over again. Guess it's back to using traps and carrots to kill enemies. Hold, please. Three weeks later. Okay, it took 12 more levels, but we finally got it. We can now use our carrots to do actual damage. Oh god, I'm afraid to look. Oh, oh hey, that's five times as much damage. I could work with that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. You know what? We're gonna be fine. Between all the practice I got fat rolling while getting salt, and all the practice I got crafting mid-battle from my firebomb run, I think this might actually be possible. Good on you, Harvey. This world might just fear you yet. <laughs> oh look, he even dropped a relic that helps me out. It's a sign. A sign of good things to come. A sign that things are finally... Harvey? Harvey, no. Put that down. Don't touch that. Icky. <laughs> Drop it. Drop it. So, with grappling hook in hand and our confidence restored, it's time to jump into the run with both feet. Up first is the Pyromancer. When it comes to chasing mages back to their arenas, there's not much to worry about. We can restock at any time by resting at an obelisk, and recruiting the local enemies from around the map helps keep the minions at bay as well. And before you know it, we're at the arena. Terrifyingly, carrots are good. Like, really good. I know this is the first mage, so it was likely going to be an easy fight anyway, but holy hell, that only took 13 carrots. Alright Harvey, time to honor your eldritch bloodline. You can do it. Good boy. That's one mage down, about 25 more to- Harvey? Harvey, no. Leave it. Up next is the Cryomancer. Let's see if that first mage was just a fluke. Well, there's certainly a lot more going on with this one, though the difficulty leaves a bit to be desired. It only takes two or three carrots to rip through his minions. As for the Cryomancer himself, it's basically the same as the last mage. Weird though it may sound, carrots are actually really effective against ice. Not sure why. And though I have to actually restock in the middle of the fight this time, it's only a formality. 17 carrots till knockdown. 17 carrots for a shiny new toy for Harvey. Ooh. But that's not the only new toy. We also find our first exotic strand above the arena, which, when used at Trista's alchemy table, lets me improve how many carrots I have at my immediate disposal. The 30 Irona ore I have in my inventory will never change, but we can slowly increase our total carrot count as the game goes on. Definitely important. Moving right along, it's time for the Venomancer. A little tougher, but manageable. Something to note though, the heavier your armor, the less likely you are to get knocked out of animations. You're not invulnerable or anything, but I wish I had thought of that in my firebomb run. Poise tanking might have made some of the bosses a bit easier. Speaking of easier bosses, the Venomancer doesn't take much to get out of the way. She has more defense than the last two, and might have been an issue, but Harvey made some new friends along the way to the arena, and it would have been rude to tell them that they weren't allowed to play too. Well, that's one way to finish off a boss. I guess. Eh, yeah, close enough. Hydromancer is up next. My carrots don't seem to be doing all that much to him. This might be an issue. Huh. We do even less to his minions. This might be it. This might be the moment where things get hard. Eh, maybe not. Now, don't get me wrong. Being just shy of over-encumbered is definitely causing me some issues. I'm so used to rolling around at the speed of sound that this physically pains me. But with seven carrots left to spare, the Hydromancer still goes down like all the rest. Whee! Come on, Harvey. You can ride the water rides later. Time for the Green Huntsman. Honestly, I was actually worried about this one. Not because of his defenses, we're gonna be fine there. No, what I'm actually worried about is how quick he is. Not only does he get faster and faster as the fight goes on, but he can cross his entire arena in one combo if he feels like it. Thankfully, you can poise through his arrows, uh, but not his axe. Asking a little too much with that one. It took some really tight timing, but eventually I found a way to get some restocks in at the cost of health. And eventually, Bojack Horseman goes down. That could have gone better. But I have a good feeling about the last mage of World 1. Oh god, good feeling gone. Good feeling gone! Remember how fat rolling makes the game harder? This is one of those times. The Electromancer is almost nothing but projectile attacks, and they come out at such a rapid pace that you can only hope to hang on. Thankfully, this is another boss where you can poise through some of his attacks, so restocking isn't an issue. You just need to keep an eye on your health and manage your resources appropriately. Do that, and you'll be done collecting hearts from World 1, and on to bigger and better things. Alright Harvey, welcome to Bull Garan. 
home of... You're thinking of eating that, aren't you? Oh, I'll go ahead. Terrible puns aside, it's time for the hate-filled matriarch. And right off the bat, we've got a problem. Unlike World 1, this boss has some health. Not to mention the slightly difficult timing when it comes to fat rolling through her attacks. But what else is new? No, the main problem here is that we don't have enough damage to get through. Not much we can do about that. No more carrots means no more damage. No more damage means no chance of victory. But I've got an idea. We could grind out mages for days on end, which, considering all the grinding I've already done, is a hard pass for me. Or we could use one of the pieces of equipment we made from the Electromancer. A dagger that increases your damage when you have less than 20% health. And with that, what used to do 27 damage now becomes 40. Damn, that's a 50% increase. That's more than enough. Now, if only someone would tell the Matriarch to play nice with my super cool strategy, we'd be good to go. Getting into hyper mode range isn't difficult, what with these lovely gentlemen over here. It's just the fat rolling. I'm so used to rolling across the screen in two rolls. Do people actually play like this? It takes several tries to get used to. Okay, more than several. But eventually, the singular brain cell I have left goes off. I don't need to be in hyper mode the entire fight, just for the first load of carrots. I go through the first 17 carrots, drink a flask to get back to reasonable health levels, then proceed to wipe the floor with the matriarch. Not much to look at when you scrape them off your boot. Good job, Harvey. You know what? Two new toys for you for being such a good sport. Some more carrots to throw, and a bag of marbles. Every Eldritch Horror loves marbles. Tell you what, I'll throw in a few cat's eyes as well, if you can kill the Aeromancer in one try. Whoa, take it easy there, buddy. Well, aside from getting knocked around a bit more than I'd like, the Aeromancer does, in fact, go down on the first try. Thankfully, Harvey has a very short attention span, so one bag of marbles is probably enough. Which means it's on to the Terramancer. Known for his heavy defenses, it's time to see if adding carrots to earth makes compost or pain. Ooh boy. The fat roll problem is really coming forward now. These larger mages are hard to roll through, which makes dodging their attacks reliably unreliable. Thankfully, the Terramancer is also incredibly slow, which means going through an entire bag of carrots can be done rather easily. Combined with hyper mode equipment and a few risky maneuvers, and you've got a pile of compost fit for an Inquisitor. So far so good. The damage of my carrots has been decent enough, though I do feel like I'm playing a constant game of catch up. The bosses are all getting heftier at a slightly faster rate than my damage, and considering carrots have descaling with strength and dexterity, it's unlikely we'll ever outpace them. Which brings us to the next boss, the Tireless Exalted. Looks like we're outpaced yet again, which means we're going back to hyper mode. And against a boss that summons minions that cause instant death and have no reliable patterns, yup, this is gonna be fun, isn't it? It takes a few tries, but eventually I start to develop a method. Come on, come on. Damn it! Wait, does that count? Please tell me that counts. Hey, I'll take it. Up next is Tony, and his brother Tony, and his cousin Tony, and his sister twice removed Tony, and considering how many carrots it's taking to knock out his minions, it's looking like it's gonna be another hyper mode battle. Yup, definitely another hyper mode battle. Man, I don't like no hit runs on a normal day. Doing a no hit run in heavy armor is just asking for mental pain. So, rather than die over and over again to Tony, the bastard, I decided to go against my greater judgment and do some grinding. These carrots are nowhere near upgraded, and my stats could use some work as well. After all, a brick wall is still a brick wall, regardless of when you try to break it. Better now than later. But with our new damage, it's looking like Tony's reign of terror is finally over. Well, on its way out anyhow. It takes some dangerous play, and most of my carrots. But eventually, with nine carrots left to spare, the king of the Tonys goes down. That's right, Harvey. Know thy enemy, and know him well. Ooh, what do we have here? I haven't really talked about the artifacts I've been getting, since they haven't really mattered much up to this point. But this one is worth noting. We've got decent range damage, some item find, which means less grinding, and looky look what we have here. Approximately a 1 in 10 chance at free ammunition? Yes please. To celebrate, Harvey goes and makes a friend, who teaches us how to reach World 3. What a guy. But before we do that, we've got one more mage to hunt in World 2. The Thaumamancer. Not much to see here. In fact, I was feeling so ballsy that I actually intentionally dropped into hyper mode range just to speed things up. First try, let's go. There's technically another mage hiding in World 2, but we can't access him until we get a specific item in World 3. So we'll just have to swing back when we've got that in hand. No, Harvey, that's a heart, not a hand. Good try, though. In between worlds, Harvey is invited to the king's cha- Harvey, no, leave it. And with that done, it's time for World 3. 
Will it be a breeze through of unbridled proportions? Or will Harvey be peeled like the carrot he is? Only time will tell. Personally, my bet's on Harvey, God damn it! I said leave it! First up is the Fungal Mancer, a summoner if ever there was one. Bit of a pushover as well. It's asking for trouble, but I give it some hyper mode and finish him off on the first try. Next, time for Marega Gradania, Grandma and Puppet Master of the Mire. Thankfully, the damage is perfectly fine, so we won't need to resort to hyper mode on this one. No, the main problem of this fight is the puppets. They may be the souls of cursed children, but holy hell are they hungry for carrots. Seriously, what child likes carrots this much? I ask you. Come on. Come on. She's so close, Harvey. You're like one carrot away from- Come on! Jima! Jima, no! Guess it's time for an advanced technique only taught to the most eldritch of carrots. Floating carrot strike! Ha <laughs> ha! This isn't even my final form. With Grandma taken care of, though, it's time for Harvey to get a new toy. Go ahead, buddy. You can touch this one. And with our newfound ability to create magic platforms, Harvey can- you're gonna touch that, aren't you? Oh, god damn. So, yeah, up next is the Corpumancer. I thought I'd be cute and beat her up with hyper mode, but, uh, yeah. Fuck around and find out, I guess. The next attempt, I don't even bother. And honestly, we didn't really need to anyway. One restock on carrots, and some aggressive carrot throwing later, and the Corpumancer goes down. Man, World 3 is turning out to be a bit of a slaughter fest, huh? Oh, right, World 2. Can't let the Sanguimancer think we forgot about it. Oh, for- Harvey, no! You know, normally this boss gives me a hard time. The rapid melee strikes and heavy damage are always pretty tough. But considering I can deal damage from all the way across the arena, it's actually not that bad. Boop. Easy peasy. World 2 defeaty. Right, back to World 3, where it's time to fight the Sapblood Heart. Say hi, Harvey. Good boy. I hate to say it, but despite all my efforts to stay ahead of the curve, our damage, even in hyper mode, is looking a bit grim. Combine that with the heart's large area of effect attacks, and you've got a bad time. But despite it all, at the end of the day, challenge runs must be completed. So, with some heavy and constant aggression, we do what must be done. And with that, the sapblood heart goes down. Oh hey, what'd you find there? What do you got? Who found an eldritch truth? It's you. Oh yes it is. Well, we've got two more mages to deal with before we can follow up on that one. First up is the Mechanomancer. Nothing to report here. Slow speed. Easy to dodge when you know his patterns. And, when put to the test, there's not much he can do against our vegetable might. Final boss of World 3 is the Luminomancer. Luminomancer? The one with the lights. But I gotta tell ya, considering the damage I'm dishing out to everybody, I'm not particularly worried. Nor should I have been. It took a grand total of 20 seconds to beat her down. I've sped up the fight a bit here for you all, but yeah, literally the fastest fight I've ever had. Which kinda makes me wonder what the hell is going on. Anyone familiar with my potato run from last year knows that I regularly quote that as one of my hardest challenge runs of all time. And you'd think that would mean that its predecessor would be just as difficult. But the reality couldn't be farther from the truth. And I think I know why. Not only have I grown as a player, I mean, I certainly hope I have, it's been about a year and a half, but Salt and Sacrifice has done us an extreme favor by making the carrots an official weapon instead of just a consumable item. See, the potatoes, while they did scale, basically scaled a total of like 30 damage. Probably less, if we're being honest. Which meant that every boss I beat meant the next boss would take more and more potatoes, until we were literally throwing over a thousand potatoes towards the end for some of the bosses. Compare that to Salt 2, and we've got a weapon that scales, albeit poorly in comparison to others, but significantly more than potatoes ever did. Combine that with the fact that our equipment also affects the damage, unlike potatoes, and you've got a recipe for success. At this point in the game, my build is almost complete. I've got rings that increase my damage, artifacts that increase that damage further and give me free ammo on top of that, additional artifacts that increase things like my stamina regen speed and health, and soon, very soon, I'll have equipment that increases my restock speed. And considering my strength and dexterity only needed to be at 25 each to max out the scaling damage, things are looking good. But yeah, with my build essentially complete and with Harvey having found himself a new kite to play with, there's not a whole lot left to say. What do you say, Harvey? Should we cue the montage? <laughs> All right, you heard him, Carl. Cue the music.
And that's it. That's every boss in the game defeated with carrots. All except one. You know, it's funny. I went into this challenge thinking I would be throwing myself into the same pit of madness as the potato run held. And yet, that wasn't the case. Not at all, actually. The sweet catharsis of killing mages one by one, usually on the first try, with a vegetable. I... I'm not... Is this real? Am I real? Surely. Surely I must be. After all, this run doesn't exist without me. This video. This sentence. This acknowledgement of noise that is coming out of my being and into your own. But why? Why have I done this? Why have I thrown myself, willingly, into the abyss once more? Am I trying to defeat it? No, that can't be right. No one could defeat the abyss. The abyss is all-encompassing. All we can do is resist it for as long as we can. In fact, that's all I ever do. Resist. In multiple ways. In multiple lifetimes. In multiple ways. In multiple lifetimes more. Resist. Or succumb. Succumb to that which haunts you. Which lurks over your shoulder. Which waits. You can feel it. That warm, buzzing noise. The one just behind your skull. It begs your ear. Tells you to climb. But the act is not your own. Nor the thought. It's the abyss. And it's staring back. <laughs>